Greetings, everyone. Uh, no, I'm not starting a new uh, fashion trend in uh, eyewear. Um, I'm just uh, following uh, one of the regiments I have to do as part of my uh, recovery after having gone through uh, an eye surgery two days ago. It actually has been less than uh, 48 hours. And, but that's not the reason why I'm recording this right now. And it's my privilege to come to you today as the final installment of our Peel Talk for this year. And it could not have come at a better time. Uh, I was supposed to uh, release this yesterday, but uh, I was admitted at emergency due to some concerns with how my eyesight was recovering after surgery. So with that, I, would, I just wanted to make sure that uh, I had a way to give some remarks at the end of the year as part of our pill talk, uh, something we've committed to doing uh, during this time of pandemic to make sure that uh, you have company in the way you study and read the, the word of God. And today marks a historic event as we say goodbye to 2020. And I'm sure there's a lot of mixed feelings out there uh, whether or not we're really eager to welcome the new year or just really happy that uh, we can get to say goodbye to this uh, devastating year. And devastating doesn't uh, truly describe what this year has been about. Many lives have been turned upside down and health has been one of the primary concerns. The economy, jobs, uh, livelihood, the businesses, and we're, we have been struggling with so many concerns. So it's not to take light of what's happening out there. But I wanted to make sure that uh, we are brought to the message and the encouragement that comes from the word of God. So uh, let's take a trip to the Old Testament. And one thing that has truly been an encouragement to me personally that I wanted to share with you. You see, during... Uh, this difficult last two days as I endured a very complicated eye surgery. And after having been admitted to emergency yesterday where I spent nearly seven hours there, I got to see the bravery for the uh, first hand. Um, I uh, witnessing the courage and commitment of our healthcare workers um, as I've uh, witnessed them looking after those who needed healthcare not necessarily those who have COVID concerns, but everyone, uh, even for those who just came in, uh, who slipped and fall for the early morning snow that, uh, and rain that we had yesterday, and just people dealing with so many different health uh, concerns. And uh, I was also taken into uh, my own room, uh, which is part of the blessing of being an emergency as I was concerned of the possible exposure I might have. So in a way, all the steps and all the details that I went through yesterday in the last two days was a testimony of how God has been looking after us. You know, being in my own private room because uh, there was, that was the only room that had the eye examination tools and equipment. I got to feel firsthand how the Lord has been looking after me and after every one of us. So that reminded me of a few things uh, in the word of God. And Paul, uh, I remember what he said about the fact that we live by faith and not by sight. Uh, but one thing that did occur to me as my wife encouraged me to meditate and to listen uh, to just God's word. I could not read, of course, with my impairment, with my visual impairment. So I had taken a, a trip to memory lane on what I could uh, get from God's word in terms of an encouragement and he took me to Genesis chapter 16 and the message of this uh, passage is uh, very relevant and certainly very moving and touching for me and this is the story of Abraham and Sarah who uh, took it upon themselves to uh, hasten the promises that God made to them in the midst of uh, their difficulty Sarah being barren and after realizing that God had promised to give them children, kind of intervene in God's uh, ways. 
uh, and means to uh, fulfill these promises. So they took up the, upon themselves to uh, do something. And part of these uh, steps that they took was for Sarah to recommend or to suggest to a Abraham to, to sleep with uh, his uh, with uh, with his handmaiden and then and this was Hagar and of course that created complications uh, Hagar did bear him a son uh, Ishmael uh, but then uh, Sarah did not look kindly upon her and so she dealt with her harshly the bible said in Genesis 16 and this led to Hagar being uh, taken out of uh, the tribe and landing in a very difficult and lonely position. But God spoke to her, came to her uh, at the right place at the right time. And Hagar was so encouraged by this. And so she made this statement in Genesis 16, 13, where she said, so she called the name of the Lord who spoke to her. You are a God of seeing. For she said, truly here I have seen him who looks after me. Let me repeat that because that's worthwhile for us uh, to understand the message that Sarah spoke about the God who she experienced and encountered personally. In this coming year, we all need that encouragement. So here it is, Genesis 16, 13. So she called the name of the Lord who spoke to her. You are a God of seeing, for she said, truly here I have seen him who looks after me. When she spoke of here, it could mean a, a place for you as well, a place of discouragement, a place of disappointment, a place of trial, a place of turmoil, tribulation, a place of trouble, uh, a place where you're just struggling uh, to make ends meet or struggling to make sense of what's going on. And this year has been that place. But it is encouraging for us to know that God sees us. Look, look at what that Hagar said, you are a God of seeing. You are the God who sees me. And that's why she called that place El Roy, um, Bir Laha El Roy, because that is the place where God sees her. And everywhere God sees us, that's encouragement enough for us to know that we can brave this coming year. Truly here, I have seen him who looks after me. And it, it's incredible because Hagar was playing with words here. Um, saying to herself that I have seen him who looks after me and also saying that God sees me. And when I am in this condition of a visual impairment and thinking uh, it scared me uh, back in uh, yesterday early morning where I could not even see from my right eye and I was willing to accept the faith that if God caused me to be blind in one eye that this is part of his plan. And one of the thoughts that occurred to me was is it impor more important for me to see or is it more important, important for me to know that God sees me? And I had to weigh that. And that weighing of truth came to me with such a, a flood of assurance that it is more important to know for, for me to know that God sees me and that God looks after me. And I could never be in a bad place because I know that all the journey and all the steps will lead me to where God wants me to be. And where God wants me to be is always for the best. And I hope that you take encouragement as well as we uh, brave this coming year. So happy new year, uh, healthier and more hopeful as uh, we embrace uh, what's coming next for us. And may uh, the words of Sarah, uh, of sorry, of Hagar encourage you as well in Genesis 16, 13. She, so she called the name of the Lord who spoke to her. You are a God of seeing. For she said, truly here, I have seen him who looks after me. May the words of God be an encouragement for you today and for tomorrow as we welcome the new year. God bless all of you.